I am Tristana Anel Washington, Life Balance Coach and Productivity Consultant. I am the CEO and founder of Profitable Productivity. And what I do is I help women executives and entrepreneurs to have it all without sacrificing the things that matter most to them. It's all about prioritizing the things that are most important to you. Today's topic is how you go from feeling stuck to unstoppable. We've all been there. We've all been in this place where we have something that we really are desiring to accomplish in life or in our business or in our career. But then for whatever reason, we are unable to move forward. It seems like no matter what we do, we can't seem to get out of the place where we are. And even if we do try to move forward, it seems like we just get knocked back. Like there's some sort of barrier, some sort of block to us moving forward. So first of all, I wanna normalize this. We all feel that way at one time or another. So there's nothing wrong with you if that's how you feel. The key here is to not stay there and allow yourself to do something different so that you can get out of the place of feeling stuck and get into some momentum so you can then become unstoppable. So let me tell you first why I decided to switch today's topic to from stuck to unstoppable. I personally have been feeling a little bit stuck in my business. Well, I can't really say stuck, but I've been in inaction, right? I've been in this place of inaction and it was bothering me because I am one of those people who's always going, always doing things, always has a goal that I am trying to reach and I am like on it. Once I set the goal and create the plan, I am like, boom, 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 let's get moving. But what has been happening is even though I know what the goal is, even though I have a plan, I have not felt like moving forward, which is really unusual for me. But I've been allowing myself the grace to be in this place of waiting for the green light, if you will. So this morning I was getting ready to go for my walk because I decided, I was like, you know what? I gotta get back on my morning routine. And um, part of that is for me to go on a walk. And as I was getting ready to leave, I heard the Holy Spirit say to me why people often feel stuck. Well, not so much why they feel stuck, but why they stay stuck where they are. And when he told me the solution, I was blown away because it is super simple, easy to implement. And it's so easy and so simple that you probably are overlooking it. But before I tell you what that one thing is, let's talk about why you are feeling stuck anyway, because when if you don't understand the why, then it's gonna be difficult for you to actually move beyond where you are today. All right, so um, for some of you, your why may be that you are paralyzed by perfection. Listen, I am a recovering perfectionist, so you're in great company. The reason why you're feeling stuck or paralyzed by perfection is you want everything to be just right before you put it out there, or you want it to be just right before you take any action. And really what the root of perfectionism is, is shame. Because you're afraid that if you put it out there and there's any type of mistake that you will be judged or that people will look at you at a different light. Um, it may, makes you feel vulnerable to take the thing that you are working on, the thing that you have created and put it out there because you're like, oh my gosh, what if something is wrong with it? What if people don't like it? What if people think that, you know, we got a little imposter syndrome going on? What if people think that I don't know what I'm talking about or who am I to Put this thing out here or to do this thing whatever the case may be right so oh, that's some of you let me know in the comments if your why you're not moving forward or why your why for being stuck is you're paralyzed by perfection if you you are a perfectionist let me know in the comments if that's you another reason why you feel stuck is that 
you're afraid of making the wrong decision or you're afraid of making the wrong move. What, you know, you have several different options, many different directions that you can go in and you're like, well, you stay stuck because you don't want to make the wrong move. Let me know in the comments if that's you, that you get in kind of analysis paralysis. <laughs> it's a different type of paralysis, right? You're, you get in that, stuck in that analysis paralysis. You got to do all the research. You have to have all the information and then you want to sit with it. You got to pray about it. You got to mull it over. You got to do your pros and cons list and you got to talk to all these different people to get opinions so that you can be 100% sure that you are making the right decision. The third one is that you're overwhelmed by the actual task itself or the project itself. It's so big that you're like, I don't even know where to begin. I know that I want to do this thing. I know that I am purposed to do this thing, that I, I have a call to do this thing, but it is so big. It's so much bigger than me that it becomes overwhelming and you can't make the first move, right? Let me know if that's you. It's very easy for you to get in that space of feeling overwhelmed if it is something that is really large and it fits, especially if it feels larger than life. And there is the saying that if your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough, right? I feel the same way about goals. If your goals don't frighten you, if they don't make you feel like, oh, I don't know if I could do this, then you haven't set your sights high enough. So that's very common. The fourth one is you you get worried about what other people think you're worried about other people's opinions listen i get it we all have this innate desire to belong none of us want to be um feel like we're outcast or feel like we're an outsider um or to feel like we're exiled or or out of the loop like we want we have this sense of belonging there's been so much research done on oh my gosh it's kind of like following the crowd right so you, though they've done these experiments where they'll have one person do something and eventually they'll keep doing it and eventually everyone around in vicinity like let's say you're looking you're outside and you're in a group around a group of people and you're looking up just really looking up and pointing or whatever then other people around you will start to look up and point as well and before you know it everyone around you or just about everyone around you will be looking up even though you're not looking at anything you could be looking at nothing but just simply because you're doing it and pointing and getting other people's attention eventually the entire crowd will follow you right so th that can keep you in a place of feeling stuck when you're worried about what other people are going to say or how other people are going to feel um about what you're doing the decisions that you've made the choices that you've made how you're showing up in the world the career path you take, the the things that we buy, right? A lot of people get kind of dumb themselves down or sabotage their success because they're concerned about other people thinking that you, you know, like, oh, you think you're better than me or you think you're better than everyone else because, you know, you bought this particular car or you bought this particular house or you're doing the, going on these particular um, trips whatever whatever that thing is for you the fifth reason why you might feel stuck is that you're forcing it you're trying to force things to happen there's that you know maybe you're trying to squeeze that square peg into a round hole and one of the things that i've really embraced in life as a you know for the last i guess two years now is ease and flow Whenever I feel like I'm forcing something, now I'm like, mm -mm. I'll recognize that I'm forcing it. I'm like, this is not the direction I need to go in. Because if I have to force it, it's not, it's, it's not right. There are some times when you have to push through, um, but then there are times when you're literally trying to force things to happen. You're trying to make it happen rather than allow it to happen, right? So if anyone in the forcing it, category let me know in the comments the last reason why that I'm gonna to share today is girlfriend my sister <laughs> you are doing the most you are doing the most and not getting anything done you're not getting it done 
you are the one that is doing a little bit of this over here, doing a little bit of this over here, a little bit of this over there, right? You're doing all the things and what you're essentially doing is spinning your wheels. It's like you're on the hamster wheel. You're running, 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 going, 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 but you are not experiencing any momentum, any movement in the things that you're doing because you are on that hamster wheel, just, just running away, expending all this energy, but you are not going anywhere. Not going anywhere. Those are the most common reasons why we get in this place where we feel stuck. The one thing that you can do to get unstuck is to simply move. Just move. Take a step in any direction. We as women oftentimes overthink everything when all we have to do is move. I know it's so simple. It's so simple, but you know, we like complicated. We want to complicate. We want to complicate everything. We want to complicate everything, but the simple answer is to move. So if you are paralyzed by perfection, you're feeling stuck in your it's the perfectionism that resonates with you, then folk think about just move. Focus on progress over perfection. I'll tell you a quick story. I was recently featured on Voyage ATL's website, digital, their digital magazine, and I, I originally provided them my website, tristadaalexander.com website, and when they sent me the final thing before they published it, um, that was on there and I decided that I wanted to use Tristetta Nell because I was like, this is gonna be you know, out here for, for, for forever. And I wanted it to be directed to the appropriate site. Well, I own the domain Tristetta Nell, but there was nothing there. <laughs> so I decided to just really quickly throw together a just one page webpage. That was it. I just, I was like, I'm going to just create a one page webpage really quick today. I spent an hour and a half creating it. And then I hopped in my mastermind pod. I was like, Hey, will you all look at this? Proof it. Let me know. Give me your feedback. And they gave me their feedback. I made some tweaks and I went live with it. Is that it? Is that all that I wanted? No, but it was a start. Eventually I'll go back and expand it. I'll probably, and I'll eventually I'll hire someone to actually build me a full on website but it was good enough, right? It is movement, it is pr progress. It's taking me in the direction that I want to go. So no matter what is on the site, this today, next week, next year, the next decade, anyone who clicks that link is gonna be directed to whatever the new thing is, right? And it won't look the same a year from now. It won't look the same a decade from now. It won't look the same 20 years from now. It won't look the same. Progress over perfection. Um, if you are afraid of making the wrong decision or going in the wrong direction, then realize that just like you made that decision or just like you moved in that one direction, you can change courses. You can turn around. You can go in another direction. You can pivot. It's not permanent. Now, if that brings you a lot of anxiety to just move, then think about before you make any decision or you go in any particular direction, then ask yourself this question, what's the worst that can happen? If I make this decision, if I go in this direction, what's the worst that can happen? And then once you identify what the worst is that can happen, ask yourself this question, can I live with that? If the answer is yes, then move. If the answer is no, then find another direction. Go to make another decision, right? It's as simple as that. Just like you made the decision to go in one direction, you can change your mind and go in another direction. How many times have you gone and bought something at the store and you tried it on, you liked it in the store, but then you got it home and you changed your mind? It's as easy as returning an item to the store. You know what? I changed my mind. This isn't, I, I don't like, it doesn't, it's not giving what it's supposed to be giving. So I'm gonna, I, I reserve the right to change my mind and go a different direction.
All right, so if you're stuck in that overwhelm space because the task or project, it seems so big, then stop focusing on the bigness of it. Focus on the one step. What's the one thing you can do right now? Because the 10,000 mile or 100,000 mile journey, it all begins with the first step. So instead of trying to look 5, 10, 20, 50, 100 steps down the line, focus on the one step, the one step that's right in front of you right now. Focus on that. For those of you who are worried about the opinions of others, settle it in your heart, settle it in your mind, settle it in your spirit that you are not for everyone. Everyone is not going to like you. Everyone is not going to accept you. Everyone is not going to be on your side. You cannot please all the people all the time. But there are people who are for you. There are people who are with you. There are people who will support you. There are people who will cheer you on. There are people who love you. Do it for them and do it for you. Don't worry about the naysayers. Don't worry about the people who aren't gonna be in your camp. Because honestly, if you're in this group, you're a leader. And every leader has a target on their back at one point or another. You're not always gonna be liked. And every now and then, you're gonna be loved. But as a leader, you are here to disrupt. You are here to lead people in a path that they would not go alone. And when you are leading, you are blazing a new trail. If you think about it, like if we were to go, I'm at my dad's house and behind his house is a bunch, there's a bunch of woods. If I'm leading you through the woods, I'm in the front and that means I have to have my machete and I'm knocking things down, right? I have to go and knock some stuff down. And I, that means I'm gonna be disrupting the wildlife, right? There might be snakes there. There might be all bugs and animals. I'm going before and I'm taking the heat so that all those who come behind me don't have to deal with that. That's who you are. You're a leader and leaders lead. If you are the person who is in the camp of trying to force things, pause, stop trying to force it and think about this. There may be another way. There may be another way that's easier. There may be another way that's better. Someone trying to push a cart, like a really heavy cart up a hill when they could have just simply turned around and gotten on the elevator to go to where they were trying to go, to the top of the hill. So much easier, right? But a lot of times we get wrapped up in our ego and you know we've decided that this is the direction that we want to go in. This is the way that it's supposed to happen. This is the way it's supposed to work. This is the way we're supposed to do it. Or maybe someone else told you that this is the way that it needs to be done. And so you're trying to make it work when Maybe all you need to do is turn around and go in the other direction. Maybe you need to turn around and go against the grain. Don't be afraid to go another way. You don't have to force things to work. You don't have to force things to happen. Perhaps you need to turn around and go another way. And then the, the last one that we talked about is doing the most but not getting it done. You're the person who's spinning your wheels all the time. Just focus. Pick one thing. Focus on one thing. What is the priority? Instead of trying to go in six different directions, trying to do all these different things at one time, identify what is the one thing. There, um, there's this book that I read every year called um, The One Thing. It's by Gary Keller and Jay Papasan, if I remember correctly. And the thing that they say is, what is the one thing that I can do that such by doing it makes everything else easier or obsolete? Figure out what your one thing is. What is the one thing that you can do that's going to make things in your life easier? What's the one thing that you can do that's going to actually propel you in the direction that you desire to go? What's the one thing that's gonna make your life easier so that you don't have to worry about all these other things? And focus on that. And once you get momentum going there and it's like starting to run like a well oiled machine, then you can pick up something else. Because now you're in the state of ease and flow over here, you have the capacity to add something else onto your plate, right? So once you identify that and you get it going good, then what's the next one thing? You can ask yourself before you begin your day each day, when you first sit down at your desk or wherever it is that you do your work, 
ask yourself this question. What's the one thing that I can do today that's going to make everything easier or it's going to make some things obsolete? And then focus on that. Focus on your one thing. So what are you going to do next time you feel stuck? Because that's all it is. It's a feeling. You're not actually stuck. It's simply a feeling. And you have the power to move. No one's holding you down. No one's holding you back but you. All you have to do is make the decision to move and then move.